Hello, alien scientist. Today we'll look at the heating and cooling of matter. You probably remember the three states of matter, which are solid, liquid, and gas. We can look no further than water to study the most common examples of these three states. The solid state of water is ice, the liquid state is water, and the gas state is steam or water vapor. Matter can change between the states if you heat it or cool it. In other words, you can change the temperature of the matter. To change solid ice into a liquid, you raise the temperature. If you raise the temperature even further, you will change liquid water into a gas. If you were starting with water vapor or water in the gas state, then you lower the temperature or cool it down, you will cause the water vapor to condense back into a liquid. If you lower the temperature even more, you will cause liquid water to freeze into ice, which is a solid. We can tell whether water is being heated or cooled by measuring its temperature. Today we'll do this in degrees Celsius. Let's look at an example where we'll warm up some water from a solid state to a liquid state. Let's say we start with some ice, or solid water, that is at negative 3 degrees Celsius. That means it's colder than 0 degrees. Then we warm it up to room temperature by taking it out of the freezer and leaving it on the counter. Just as the temperature of the ice reaches zero degrees is when the ice begins to melt into a liquid. At room temperature, which is about 23 degrees Celsius, which is warmer than zero degrees or greater than zero degrees, you will have liquid water. You can see that zero degrees Celsius is a special temperature. It is known as the melting point of water. That's because it's the temperature when ice begins to melt. Let's take a closer look at why changing the temperature of water will cause its state of matter to change. Water molecules are made up of an oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. We see one here under the block of ice. When the temperature of water is below zero degrees, the water molecules are still and stuck together. This means that when it's a solid, water will hold its shape, in this case, a cube. When the temperature of water warms up and rises above zero degrees Celsius, then the water molecules begin to vibrate, allowing the molecules to slip and slide past each other, but they are still touching each other. This is the liquid state, because the molecules can move around each other. Liquid will take the shape of whatever container you put them in, like a glass. When the temperature of water warms up and rises to 100 degrees Celsius or higher, then the water molecules begin to vibrate even more and will start bouncing around all over the place. This is the gas state. Because the molecules can bounce around away from each other, they will spread out into any available space. Let's look at another example. In this case, we'll heat up some water that was at room temperature or about 23 degrees Celsius. We'll do this by boiling it on a stove. Just as the temperature of the water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the water will begin to boil and will change from a liquid into a gas called steam. Now, as long as the temperature is equal to or greater than 100 degrees, the water will continue to change into steam. 100 degrees Celsius is another special temperature. It is known as the boiling point of water. Now let's look at what happens if you start off with water vapor or water in a gas form and want to change it into a liquid. If someone just filled a bathtub up with water, then you'll notice that there's a lot of steam or water vapor in the air of the bathroom. In order to change that water vapor or gas back into a liquid, all you have to do is expose that warm gas to something that is colder. This colder object could be the glass of the bathroom windows or even the bathroom mirror. When the gas or water vapor molecules hit the cold glass, then they cool down quickly, which causes them to change back into a liquid. That is why you'll see drops of water forming on the glass.